Hey everybody, Lauren here. It is great to see you. I sure hope you're ready for an adventure. What do you say? Are you ready? That's not very excited. I think we can do better. What do you say? Are you ready? <laughs> okay, you've convinced me this time. Let's get started. Let's start by remembering really quickly what we talked about last week. Do you remember? We started at the very first book of our Bible, our guide. Do you remember what the first book of the Bible is called? That's right, Genesis. In Genesis chapter one, we learned that God started from nothing and created the entire world. Not only did God create the entire world, but God, He's got the whole world in his hands. That's especially true of people created in God's image. Do you remember the names of the very first people God created? That's right, Adam and Eve. And just like anybody, Adam and Eve needed a home. And the Bible gives us some clues about where their first home was and what happened to it. That's the story we're going to talk about today. But first, I want you to imagine the perfect place. This would be the best place to be or to visit. Who would be in your perfect place? What things would you do there? What things would you need in a place to make it perfect? I want you to close your eyes and imagine what this place would be. Or, if you're watching this video with other people, you can press pause and talk about it together. Here's a picture of a pretty cool place that I know. And when you're ready, you can press play again. Knowing how creative you all are, I am sure you just imagined some pretty cool places. The picture I shared was of the house where I grew up in Ohio. I live in Michigan now, but still, every time I visit that place, it feels like home. And home, for most people, is a pretty special place. That was especially true for Adam and Eve. The Bible tells us that their very first home was called the Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden was perfect. It was more perfect than all of the places you just imagined. They could hang out with all of the animals that God had just created. They had all of the food they could ever want, and they had each other. But none of those things are what made the Garden of Eden so perfect. What made the Garden of Eden so perfect was that they were there with God. That sounds like a pretty perfect place, doesn't it? I think so. So, I should just show you where it is on a map and we can all hop in an airplane and go visit it, right? There's just one problem. I can't. And to understand why I can't, let's hear the story of Genesis chapter two. Diane? This is the story of Adam and Eve. God made a wonderful garden for Adam and Eve, and in it they were very, very happy. It was the home they were made for, and they had everything they needed. And God was with them in the garden. God's garden was full of life. From the beautiful flowers to the towering trees, it was all theirs to explore to look after and enjoy. And everything would stay this way as long as Adam and Eve followed the one rule God had given them. You mustn't eat from the tree, this tree, God told them. It will hurt you. One day, a crafty snake came to Eve in the garden. Did God really say, 
Don't eat any of the fruit in the garden, the snake asked. Oh, no, said Eve. There is only one tree we mustn't eat from. God says the fruit will hurt us. Eve knew that God loved her, and she trusted God. God knew what was good for her and what was not. And God's rule meant was meant to keep her safe. But the snake told Eve a terrible lie. Oh, it's not going to hurt you, said the snake. In fact, it will make you just like God. Then Eve wondered, did God really love her? Should she trust God? Eve listened to the snake, who always tells lies, instead of trusting God, who always tells the truth. She took the fruit and tasted it. She gave some to Adam. And then, because Adam and Eve had disobeyed God, everything changed. The world that God had made out of love was broken. That night, God was walking in the garden in the cool evening air and was looking for his beloved children. Where are you, God called. But Adam and Eve were hiding from God. Did you eat the fruit I told you not to eat? God asked. Yes, said Adam. It was Eve's fault. It was the snake's fault, said Eve. Now God's heart was deeply sad because God's children had not trusted. God still loved Adam and Eve. They would always be God's children. But the garden could no longer be their home. So he made them clothes for them and sent them out. Now sadness and sickness and death had come into God's perfect world, and everything was different. But God wasn't any different, and God's love wasn't different. God didn't want the world to be broken. He wanted his children to stay, he didn't want his children to stay far from him. This wasn't what the world was made for, and it wasn't what God's children were made for. But God already had a plan, a plan to bring his children back. One day, everything would be made new again. Okay, Lauren. Thanks, Dan. You know, I thought it was ready for an adventure this week, but that story, that story just makes me feel sad and angry and all sorts of bad emotions. Adam and Eve had a perfect home. They were with God. But they didn't trust God, and they didn't rely on God fully to provide. So when they were tempted to not follow God, they made the wrong choice. And their wrong choice ruined everything. This story doesn't just make me feel sad or ashamed or angry at Adam and Eve, though. This story also reminds me that just like them, I don't always trust God, and I don't always rely on God. When I'm tempted, I make wrong choices too. I sin too. And that doesn't feel very good, especially when I see my sin hurt other people. Ugh, this all just feels bad. Can you help me? Is there something 
that can help me feel better. I think I heard you say Jesus, but I'm not sure. Can you say it a little bit louder? That's right. You're right. Thank you. That makes me feel so much better. I remember now that at the end of Diane's story, she said something that gives us hope. Adam and Eve's sin ruined everything on earth, but it didn't change God. God is still perfect, and God has always had a plan to take care of people's sin. We're still at the beginning of our story. Adam and Eve are in Genesis chapter 2. We have the whole rest of the Bible, especially once Jesus comes, to learn about God's plan for forgiving our sin. Now, I promised you maps as part of this adventure. And like I said before, I can't show you where to go visit the Garden of Eden. Because of Adam and Eve's sin, we can't get there anymore. I can show you where some Bible scholars think it might have been. Bible scholars are people who study the Bible, like our pastors, in order to help people like us understand it better. And they use some clues from Genesis chapter 2 to guess that the Garden of Eden might have been in the countries we now know as Iraq and Iran. Here's a map of what that looks like even closer up. We could travel to the places on that map today, but we wouldn't find the Garden of Eden. Because of Adam and Eve's sin, people can't get to the Garden anymore. Because of sin, we can't be in the first perfect place that God created. It's important to remember that story. It reminds us that we should fully trust and rely on God and that when we don't, we give in to temptation and we sin. But what's really exciting and what gives us hope is that we're promised a different perfect place. Because of Jesus, because he died on the cross and rose again, we have the promise of living with God forever in heaven. And heaven is going to be perfect. It's going to be more perfect than any place we can ever imagine because we will be in heaven with God. Would you pray with me? Dear God, we're sorry. We're sorry that sometimes, just like Adam and Eve, we don't trust you and we make bad choices. Please help us do better. But thank you. Thank you for loving us and for having a plan to forgive our sin, even though we will sometimes make mistakes. Thank you for sending Jesus. We love you, God. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. It was great to see you this week. I'm excited to keep talking about God's plan and continuing our adventure next week. We'll see you then. Bye.